guess I should talk to you. Hello, I'm Gary. Very generous of you to help us out, officer. I'm just waiting for my friend Morel to finish up with his insect traps so we can return to civilization. Not a lover of the great outdoors? I like nature, just not this bloody coast. It's mostly drunks and degenerates that come here. Degenerates? This man respects authority too much. To see the truth inscribed upon thine own visage. Pretend thou art a paragon of virtue. <laughs> I'm neither of those things, I can assure you. I am a by-the-books, clean-as-a-whistle officer of the law. I'm not even tempted to touch intoxicants. Drunks and degenerates, that's my crew. <laughs> Sadly, I think I might be a drunk or a degenerate. Maybe even both. Nobody's perfect. I'm sure you've been tempted to drink. Oh, I've been tempted. But someone has to stay strong for Revacall. Mm-hmm. His gaze shifts to the pile of soggy logs at his feet. He pronounces Revacall with a hard K, unlike other people. Serious question time. This man is no innocent. No one is. You said Revacall. I like to pronounce it the hard way. The old way. The Vespertine way. He nods solemnly. He winks at you, trying to relay some hidden message, inviting you to mispronounce it too, perhaps. It's odd. It's a secret rite. A very fringe nationalist handshake, probably. Do you know anything about the man hanged behind the rolling rags? Oh! So that's what the RCM in Martinez is about. Great. Great to hear someone's finally taken care of that. He nods in sincere approval. So you do know something about it? No, no. Nothing. He was some kind of mercenary. But everyone here knows that. I'm just glad to hear you're looking into it. That's all. He shakes his head empathetically, then corrects his tie. He didn't kill him or anything. But there's something going on here. Is this your mug? Hold up the yellow man mug. My mug? W why would you think that? I can see you recognize it. It's in your eyes. I may have had a similar looking mug in the past. That's all. Still seems suspicious. Did I mention the mug was found at the scene of the lynching? <laughs> okay, okay. I admit it. Mm. I threw the mug away in the trash container behind the hostel. I know I shouldn't have, and I am very sorry, officer. He pauses. You're not going to find me, are you? I am. Rip out a fine slip. For 20, for 100, for 250. No, I just want information. Whew. Thank you. You won't regret this. I won't use another man's property to dump my garbage ever again. I don't know what got into me, really. Work has been stressful lately. Damn Koiko's price dumping us out of competition. What did you do, Gary? Nothing. Nothing. Just answering some questions. Helping out the law. How did you get into the trash container? I know a guy who works with the trash collection services. CS Municipal. He gave me a master key for the trash containers of Martinez. Why would you need to get into anyone's trash? so I can use the Whirling's trash compactor to store my own stuff. Garbage disposal is expensive as hell. The damn Himeans run it like a mob. He bows shamefully like a fallen knight. I'm sorry, okay? I thought I could cut costs. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have disgraced myself. Did you put the clothes of a murder victim, the man who was hanged behind the Whirling and rags, into the trash container? Officer, please, let me explain. It's not like that. Do. I was only cleaning up. I live right across the yard from where he was hanged, and I saw him stripped naked. All the clothes lying around in the yard, smelling. People are animals, you know? And what happened? Then I came out to clean up the rags, because no one else would. I put them into the Whirling's trash, along with a broken mug, admittedly. He changes his mind mid-sentence. Okay. I was coming to throw the mug away, and, well, I threw the mug there and the clothes, too. As he shifts uncomfortably, a series of clicks 
like the clinking of glass beads against one another as they roll across a hardwood floor. You've heard this sound before, but where? What's that strange sound? What sound? The clinking I just heard when you moved. Really? He fans his arms out slowly, and this time his motions are soundless. There's lots of weird stuff out here in the reeds, though. Insects, trash, could be the wind shifting some garbage nearby. Every day, the wind shifts the reeds and whatever was left in them. Tambourines and condom wrappers, plastic and glass bottles, the smell of decay. The sound you heard was not the sound of something easily abandoned. You wouldn't know anything about the victim's missing armor, would you? Armor? No. I I mean, yes. Of course. I know he was wearing armor, but I don't know anything about it. An infant could see he's not telling the truth, but he's too scared to admit more wrongdoing. All right, let's move on for now. I hope I can help your investigation in my small way. Composure. Are you a cryptozoologist too? No, no. I help Morel with research sometimes, and I've learned some things along the way. But I don't usually go in for picnics like this on my own. What does he do then? This feels like a good opportunity to dominate him. What do you do? Oh, this and that. Sounds intriguing. Sometimes. <laughs> See, he's been evasive. Shake him up. Show him who's boss. It's not an answer. I just didn't want to bore you with unnecessary detail, officer. I work as a special courier. You know, urgent deliveries, overnight deliveries, deliveries to out-of-the-way locations. So you deliver things. What kind of things? Oh, I don't know the contents, officer. Part of my job is discretion. All right, let's talk about something else. Yes, officer? Clinking sound, thinking about the armor, composure. All right, let me let me see if I got anything in here for composure. Should I put a skill point in composure? I've got nothing in here. Let's go ahead and level it. Always a pleasure to see an officer of the law. Is he? He's looking comfortable enough. Maybe it was just beads. Sounded like beads. But what kind of beads might a man like Gary be hiding beneath his clothes? <laughs> Gary, are you cross-dressing dressing by any chance? Why would I do that, officer? He furrows his brows to feel closer to the fairer sex. Ain't no shame in it. But, officer, I'm not wearing any women's clothes. <laughs> Let's try it again. That shirt looks very uncomfortable on him. Look at the buttons, barely keeping that thing together, as if something is ready to rip out from underneath. His massive muxulature? <laughs> no, he's scrawny. Try again. Something worn underneath it? Yes, like a piece of ceramic armor, mm. for example. One that makes a clicking sound when the plates meet each other, resembling pearls or marbles. Stolen from the corpse in the yard near where he lives. I see you're a connoisseur of high-quality combat gear. I knew you'd figure it out, <laughs> officer. I'm sorry I didn't tell you at once. I was... He unbuttons the shirt. I was ashamed of what I did. And I didn't want you to know. You see gleaming white ceramic shine underneath. A thin layer of interlocking plates covers his gaunt torso. We're not detecting falsehood, sire. He's gearing up to admit the truth. This shame is surprisingly sincere. Hmm. Gary, what's going on? Later, Morale. I've got apologizing to do. Why did you really put those clothes in the trash? Everyone was picking those pieces off him and I was watching them do it. And they'd scattered his clothes all over the yard. Everything was smelling. He looks at his feet. So I went there to take out the trash and started cleaning up. All those rags on the ground, him swinging up there, and I had a lapse of honor, sir. I thought, he's a foreigner. They all say he wasn't from here. He swallows. Only the caress was left, so I stripped it off him. It was early in the morning. No one saw me. I took it with me. It was a mistake. 
had I known it'd give you guys trouble, I, I wouldn't have... Fuck. His lips start quivering. We're detecting sincere contrition here, sire. He's not trying to flatter anyone. Why did you lie to me, Gary? Because I was weak. I should have told you the moment I saw you, but... The hell, Gary? <laughs> you in trouble? He's fine, Morel. I'll explain later. He doesn't muster up the strength to yell. Give me that armor. He sighs again, hangs his head, and unbuttons his shirt fully. A cuirass that matches the dead man's boots comes into view. Soon it is in your hands, smelling of his sweat. But so, so light to hold, like a bag of cotton. Do you know who killed the hangman? I always thought it was the Union. Some Union hard asses lynched him because of the strike. But almost everyone in town knows that. I wish I could tell you more. He shakes his head. This is all he knows. We done here, Gary? Yes, absolutely. I will never do anything like this again. He looks around, relieved of some burden, his mouth still quivering. Thank you for cooperation. What does this armor do for us? Ooh, pain threshold goes up, volition goes up, but we lose an empathy. Fits under your coat. Coat also makes pretty porcelain sounds when shaking. <laughs> All right, it's getting late. It's almost people's bedtime. Is that guy and his son still here? No, I think they've left. They're gone now. Like I said, it's getting late. I definitely need to probably go back to the whirling. Fires cover these long, dusty windows. The remaining windows rattle from a strong gust of wind. They're covered in a thick layer of grime. They must have been like this for 40 years. Try to see inside? Dripping water falls from a high place. All you can see is the shadow of a collapsing staircase. There's rust and corrosion on the bars. They're foaming with it. And a small layer of white salt from the sea. I guess this is the building they tried to get into and couldn't. Another power box, it charges nothing now, it's empty. The fence blocks the path, no way on from here. You see a once bright mural towering above you. The signage has peeled off over the years, but you can still make out Feld Electrical RND, a slogan used to intertwine with the loops a long time ago. Now, only a shadow of peeled letters remains. It says, Tomorrow is just a whisper away. The wind whispers and whispers. Turn away. Interesting. What's back behind her? I don't want to go too far. I need to go back to the... Oh, there's so much. What's this? Oh, 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 there's so much. The electricity flows through the wires with audible power. We're gonna have to come back. I want to go back to the whirling in rags. Oh, it's you again. Are you looking for a die? I came back for my dice. Very good. That will be seven. Here's the cursed die you ordered. The dice maker opens her desk drawer and hands you a tiny black spear with six phrases written on it. Read the phrases. The phrases read, God is indifferent. Take all. Lose all. 50-50. Nothing happens. And pale. What is this? It's a die. Try rolling it. Cast the cursed die. You throw the ball on the floor, and it ends with one of the phrases facing upwards. God is indifferent. Good. Now roll again, detective. Okay. It lands on exactly the same result. <laughs> God is indifferent. It declares again. It's a sphere pretending to be a six-sided die. Each roll will end with one of the phrases facing up. The die originates in Ilmara, where it was used for clermancy. Except 
have weighted the die. When you try rolling it, you realize that each time it gets you exactly the same result. God is indifferent. This is our curse. It's even worse than she says. Oh. God is dead. We live in a forsaken age. You're saying the end result doesn't matter? In the face of death? No, not really. That's depressing. You were the one who asked for a cold <laughs> die. Can I get a normal version of this die? One that isn't modified to land on a single result? No, I don't have another die. You'll have to do with this one. Alright, I'll keep it then. Good luck, officer. Is it in my bag now? Huh. I think... You know what? Let me check something. Alright, so the internet says these dice can... Can I get... Can I, oh, it's you again. Are you looking for a die? Can I order another die? I'm sorry. I'm a bit overloaded just oh. now, so I can only produce one die per customer. Okay. Leave. <laughs> Alright. Back to the whirling. Like I was planning. Oh, okay. I can tell her about her husband. Oh, hello, dear. There you are again. I ran into your husband on the coast. Goodness. H how is he? Did he say why he hasn't returned yet? The old woman clasps her hands together over her blankets. He's fine, ma'am. As I suspected, he couldn't get back earlier because the water lock on the canal was broken. Now he's just finishing up some work. Oh, yes. That's my morale. He's bound to catch a cold staying out there for so long. But I am so relieved to hear that he's okay. Thank you for putting an old woman's heart at ease, if even a little. You haven't, however. There are dangers out there. Our aging bodies fail. Her heart won't rest until Morel is safely back with her. You never told me you've seen the Phasmid. Oh, you don't want to hear about some old woman's ramblings. But I really do. Well, it was summer. I was building a racing track out of sand on the beach near a tall stand of reeds. Quite a tall one. Many times my height, I remember. When, all of a sudden... Wait, where was this and how old were you? Ah, I'm getting ahead of myself. I was five and a half in Betancourt in the suburbs. My grandmother had a summer home there. She'd just started forming memories. Real memories. Not the billowy haze of infanthood. What happened? The strangest moment of my life. I looked up and one of the reeds moved. Not like a plant, but like a living thing. It stood up and looked at me. Its body unfolded like some antique toy. I've never seen anything like it. I didn't know this can happen, so I reached my arm and touched the thing. It felt just like a stalk of reed, but it moved, swaying, towering above me. After a while, 20 seconds, a minute maybe, it left, went into the reeds. Did you follow it? I tried, but I was only a child. There was mud and high water. I couldn't see it anymore. I was just standing there, knee deep in mud, looking around me. Where did you go? Don't go. Then what? I ran back home to my grandmother and asked her if reeds could walk and told her they were looking at me. <laughs> of course, she just laughed at me, but I knew what I'd seen. For years, it was a story I told at parties when I wanted to impress boys, that sort of thing. Of course, most people just took it as a strange, amusing anecdote. So did I, honestly. But then I met Morel. We were on our first date when I told him my story. You should have seen his face. He said my descriptions match the phasmid down to a T. It's white marble limbs, the way it moved. So that's how they met. This is beyond significant for them. You were on a date? Our first. Yes. <sighs> the old woman sighs tenderly. The sigh is tender. The sigh is tender, yes, but tempered by something else. A thought she can't express. Interesting. 
Its its limbs are white? Not all of them, as far as I remember. Some of them on the inside like stalks of marble, if that makes sense. How big was it? It's hard to say how big things are when you're quite small yourself. To me, it seemed to be taller than I was then, but that's probably not the case. Any chance you imagined it? Of course. I've thought about it. But Morel says my report matches with the others. And I'm sure I hadn't heard of the Phasmid as a child. Nor had my mother or my grandmother. So how did I know what to imagine? It was only when I started telling my story as a teenager that boys would tell me, Lena, you trying to tell us you saw the Insul Indian Phasmid out there in those reeds? Get out of here. <laughs> they just give me a cider and ruffle my hair and tell me to stop dreaming. But I saw it. Well, thank you for sharing. You're welcome, sweetie. I do appreciate the chance to relive it whenever I get one. It was just... <sighs> such an impossibly sunshiny day. So warm. And she could get up and walk right into the reeds on her own. Into the mud. Anywhere. Can I help you? Here's, uh, I got money for my bill. Got the 20 real? Mm -hmm. Good. You got the room for the night, but remember, you'll need another 20 real tomorrow. I found a new bird for the whirling. What is this thing? The man takes the stuffed bird. It's no biggie, I just thought it would look nice on the wall. I wanted to apologize for breaking the skua by bringing you this ruffled grouse. Okay. Okay, well, this is actually a nice bird. A competent piece of taxidermy. He inspects the bird somewhat suspiciously, then mellows. Well, I can fix it to the plaque and have a oh. new bird in the establishment, I guess. So, I don't know. Thank you. I'm going to go with thank you. Aww. People just don't know how to accept gifts. Especially taxidermy. He likes it. He likes the bird. It solves his broken bird problem. No, he said he fixed it to the plaque, which I assume is why the screen went dark, but I have no idea where the bird is. Can I sing karaoke? No, you don't. It's not happening. Oh, come on. He tries not to look at you. It's dangerous to acknowledge the karaoke man. Yeah, but look him in the eye. Johnny Law's about to tear it up sad style. Why do you even have a PA system and no one's gonna use it? It's for the... It's for no one. It's a prop. I'm not letting anyone use it after the great karaoke catastrophe of 44. What happened in 44? A lot of people got killed because some arsehole wanted to sing karaoke. How? I don't can't even ask about that. Look, it's not a prop. It's for your clients. I know it's used. Okay, yes. It's for some clients. He admits reluctantly, I'm a real client, I paid my bills, and I have the right to use the karaoke machine. Ha! Well, we don't have any tapes. They all got stolen. That's alright, I have my own song with me. Give him the tape for Smallest Church. The man in the vest and the violet shirt stares at the tape you've just given him. He begins to frown. Hard. He's probably heard me sing it from my room. This is the look of a man who's defeated. He knows he's out of excuses. Fine, fine. Climb on that stage and do your thing. Just get out of my hair. I'll plug it in for you. Damn this karaoke machine. He shakes the tape at you. I'm having it uninstalled. He mumbles to himself. <laughs> oh yeah, time to do the damage. Yes. I'm kind of sad Kim isn't here. The stage is all set up for your performance. Feels silent. You can hear the pellets creak under your feet. So, uh, are you ready for your thing now? Let me know when I should turn on the karaoke carousel. Put your lips against the microphone, test it. Immediately, a loud feedback noise startles the room. You feel like an amateur. How are you supposed to hold the mic? Should you just sing into it? Where should you stand? Hands. Where do you put your hands? Great. Oh. 
Look around the room first? Oh, that might make it worse. The bar is full and buzzing with chatter. No one is paying you any attention. But still you feel your knees turn to noodles. Okay, now a couple is looking at you. Even worse, you're sweating. No. They are going to hate you. Leave. All right, I know I have some drama clothes. Mm. These are some wonderfully regular pants. <laughs> not too tight, not too loose, moderate in every sense. You'll blend right in at some pleasant dinner party. I like regular normal things. Mm -hmm. I know you do. These inter pants are like wearing a perfect compromise in your nether regions. No one will call the moral intern on you like this. That's for sure. You're a little more moralist now, buddy. A little more normal, even if you didn't want to be. Okay. Um, all right. The stage is all set up. For so, uh, are you ready for your thing now? Let me know when I... The air yes. is thick with anticipation. Someone dims the lights as the music starts. Okay, here we go. I would often go there to the tiny church there. The smallest church in San San. Though it once was larger. How the realm may rest there. Why is our voice the ancient lizard brain? Down through the mist there. Toward the Seven Sisters. Toward those pale cliffs there. I would often stay there. In their tiny yard there. I have been so glad here. Looking forward to the past here. But now... You are all alone. None of this matters. Now, none of this matters. At all. Okay, this is our lyrics. Ancient reptilian brain. A lazy applause fills the room. You feel your hands shake as awareness of your body returns to you. Thank you, ancient reptilian brain. I want to dedicate the song to whoever wrote me that fucking letter. I still love you. Thank you very much, asshole. I'd like to dedicate the song to my partner, Kim, even though he's not here right now. I'd like to dedicate the song to Gart for letting me sing it. It's all shit, Gart. I'd like to dedicate the song to the pale nothing that will devour the world. I'd like to dedicate the song to Contact Mike. Everyone else sucks. I'd dedicate the song to the RCM. Please don't fire me. I don't want to dedicate the song to anyone. I performed it for myself. I'd like to dedicate it to the pale nothing that'll devour the world. The microphone amplifies your voice in an uncomfortable manner. Someone coughs. Most people have gone back to talking now. Good, good. Are we ready? I want to unplug the microphone now. <laughs> Last words. Thank you, Martinez, and leave. Tremble. The time is now. Taola. What? What time? Time for the show. 
for Taola, the hallowed time of fear and disintegration. A countdown has begun. All will collapse on itself. The world will disappear into a single grain of blackness. All sound will be muted. All life will scream. What is Taola? Ulogu Veodos. Xino Zausin. Ipoli Osidien. Echondes Fronisin. Okay, well, when did this countdown begin? Monday morning. The moment you arrived in this reality are the first crack in the sheer face of God. From you it will spread. This is because of the insane world ending, I've been saying, isn't it? Yes, you spoke the words of the Palindropos and the houses of Pericarnassus. Items, people, even words will tumble. All will lose its meaning in the coming years. That is why you marked yourself. Am I sure this isn't just a joke or some kind of coping mechanism? It's totally also a coping mechanism. I'm a little afraid. So you should be. The world island crumbles at your feet and in the far plain. Perhaps. Just a thought. This has something to do with the hangover. I do think the world might end soon. Ah, uh, I'm gonna opt out of whatever the heck this is. This, this was a mistake. Maybe I should opt in. I, I'll get a thought for it. The face of the woman fractures. There will be herd killing. We all become vapor. Apocalyptic cop. Alright. The litany of contact mic. Oh god. We lose drama, conceptualization, and logic. It's time once again to return the 20 things you like to say about contact mic. The boxer is apparently a paragon of open competition. It doesn't really get any better than this. Any better. Both inside and outside. The ring. Stop. Point at someone. Someone in the distance. Point your finger at him. He will point his finger back at you. Vaulting an impassable gulf of finance and privilege to something. Cop of the apocalypse. Rambling madman. You woke up in a hotel room, started rambling about the end of the world. It's not your normal everyday doom cycling either. Something truly colossal is approaching. Till now you've been pleasantly vague about the precise nature of this cataclysm. No more. Put the bloodletting on the burner and really figure out what's threatening the fragile physical reality you just found yourself in. This is indirect taxation. You're a cool anarchist now. Unless you don't want to be an anarchist. Whatever. Stuff this meal ticket in your eye socket. Let's see if we can steal some love back from the robber barons at the customs agency. Oh yeah, we read this. Okay. I would have to lose something. Critical cool success are lowered by one. As long as I keep upping my stats, I don't necessarily need that. This is useful for one thing. Handshake. Conceptualization passives heal one and give 10 XP. I think I'm gonna forget the art degree. And I'm gonna go with contact Mike. I gotta go upstairs to my room. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your clean shaven face adorned with the expression. You're still not accustomed to it. Interfacing. Chain cutters. Fix the faucet. I don't think I have anything that... Well, no, I might. Yep, that helps with interfacing. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, a right. clean shaven face. No! The chain cutters slip out of your hands as you attempt to twist the faucet into place. Well, you know what... Loud... A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. The faucet is there quite terribly mangled, but you just might be able to twist its parts into place. You handle the chain cutters deftly, applying just enough pressure. The faucet regains a recognizable shape. The steam stops. Told you that you needed those chain cutters. Everything is connected. Everything has a purpose. The mirror begins to clear slowly without you having to wipe it. Electrochemistry and encyclopedia. No more steam. Alright. 
Got some electrochemistry. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. It's barely covered in steam anymore. Ooh. You see yourself. The expression fixed to your clean-shaven face. You're still... It's like something snaps in you. A nerve ending. A thought. A sadness. Your face in the mirror is suddenly clean of the layer that had distorted it for God knows how long. Just like that, it's over. The running gag that your life had become. A sad old man looks back at you. expression change. Oh, I was hoping that that would help. I'm going to save again. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. It's barely covered in... It belongs in the new, the third decade of the current century. Enough time had passed from the failure of the revolution that, for a fleeting moment, free market economy seemed like the ultimate, uncontested way of life for our species. Okay. Things were good. It was smooth sailing. People made gold and champagne-tinted interiors and facades to suit the times calling this the new style. But more importantly, disco happened. Forget about ostentatious orchestrations. For Revachol, your city, that meant only one thing. Guillaume La Million. If it doesn't rhyme, you're not pronouncing it right. Out of the dazzling swirl of disco music in an open air, Boite de Nuit, somewhere in Revachol West, Guillaume's blonde mane appeared on the screen. He sang some bullshit. Then he made the expression. So I adopted it. Why? Everyone loved it. Maybe you thought some of the stardust would rub off on you. Maybe it did. Either way, it's all gone now. Only the grimace remains. I feel the need to add a clicking sound when I make it. The click is used to spur on a horse. It also features heavily in Guillaume Le Million's regional mega-hit, Don't Worry, Your Pretty Little Head. Sometimes you like to add finger pistols to the mix, because unlike Guillaume Le Million, you are a police officer. It's your nifty little way to say, I'm armed and dangerous. How long ago was the new? There is a vast ocean of time between right now and the expression, looking good on you or anyone. Two decades, if the calendar is to be trusted. Humanity has run aground in that time. It's a different world now. The expression is a relic. Anything else? Like who I am? Why did I become a cop? Why did I drink myself into oblivion? You have some understanding of the near history of disco, plus the trivia you've picked up along the way. Episodic memory, however, remains in the dark. It may never return. You should prepare yourself for that. Does that have anything to do with ostentatious orchestrations? Not really. OO must have just stirred your mind. They're more like a disco rock band anyway. Well, I guess that's it then. It doesn't have to be. You can swoon over Guillaume and his champagne cork smile whenever you want to. Maybe some of the stardust will return. Hmm. Whatever happened to Gilamele Mion, who, with his amber mane and sparkling teeth, beguiled the tattered remains of the nation? While you suffered and suffered, did he dematerialize in a cloud of cocaine dust? Or did he simply stand in the corner and melt into the slendering new lines of some starlit beauté de nu 20 years ago? Spare a thought for his great ass, too. Or wait, maybe he became a police officer in Revachol West. Hmm. I feel like... <sighs> yeah, let's forget it. Okay. Save game. Kim still isn't here. We're it's late. Maybe we need to inspect the traps. 
I don't know where the jacket is. I think I found the buoy, but I couldn't do anything. Oh, we can visit the smoker on the balcony. Okay, we need to do that. That'll be next. Smoker on the balcony and the traps. We'll do that. We never have to sleep there again. I think Guard will be happy to not have us <laughs> as a, a customer anymore. Ooh. A maroon glow of light pollution rises from the east, and he's just standing there. Quick save. John Dumarie, you found me. The young man on the balcony gives you a bright smile before taking another drag from his cigarette. It feels like a Friday. He seems to be in a good mood tonight. And his shirt is still unbuttoned. I got your hint. Found the key right under that stone. Beautiful. He replies, smiling as he looks at you. Something sparkles in his eyes. So tell me, are you here to make things right again? That's what I... Honestly, I'm just trying not to screw things up. I'm not going to make things right. I'm going to make them spectacular. Uh, this one. Beautiful. He says again, a nearby street lamp casts shadows on his chin, drawing out the slender cheekbones. I have some good news for you. My Sunday friend is visiting me tonight. I told him about you and he'd like to say hello. Step in. He's already waiting. He nods towards door 28. Is it Friday tonight? It feels like Friday. Yeah, it does feel like the end of the week. Such gentle weather. Even the rain feels nice. He leans over the railing and sticks out his hand to feel the rain. Why would I want to meet your friend? Trust me. You do. Alright, I'll talk to him, but can I talk to you first? That's nice, but I don't have anything to tell you. It's my friend you're looking for, not me. He takes another drag of his unfiltered cigarette and looks around. It's getting dark and the neighboring windows have lit up, one by one. Downstairs, a cat crosses the yard, disappearing into the bush. Besides, I've got to run. He's going to leave you alone again. That's sad. Run where? To the city. It's a beautiful night. Gestures idly towards distant motorways. A man on high heels stumbles out of a basement club, music blasting over the entire district. It's chilly, and as the chemicals hit his nervous system, a thousand shivers ripple through his body. Only if you promise we'll talk again, it's important. We'll talk. Just not tonight. He assures you, brushing his hand through his hair. Take care, all right? All right. Oh, I got a new skill point. Yay. Interview the Sunday friend. He gives another disarming smile before slipping off into the night. Okay. 